Evet. Ee, merhaba arkadaşlar. Ee, herkesin sunduğu gibi biz de e, bu organize eden e, programa teşekkür ediyoruz. E, ben Utku İngilizce tanışacağım çünkü İngilizce konuşacak galiba. So, um, I'm very glad to introduce highly intellectual Utku. I believe is really has really worked hard and his capabilities surprised. Um, he is from Coach University, he's in his final year. And today he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the mean value properties of harmonic functions and a little bit where we can find such application. But if you are ready, I will give the floor to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so hello everyone today. I will talk about this interesting property of harmonic functions, uh, which is called the mean value property. So uh, first, let us start with defining a harmonic function. So let this capital U be any open subset of Rn, and U be a twice continuously differentiable real valued function from U. So uh, this delta operator is this delta is called the Laplace operator, which is uh, defined as uh, the sum of second partial derivatives uh, with respect to each variable twice. Uh, so we call this function u harmonic if its image under this Laplace operator is just equal to zero. So uh, this equation in total is just called the Laplace equation. And there is this non-homogeneous version of this equation, which is called the Poisson equation. Now, uh, before uh, proving the mean value property, we will just introduce some uh, preliminary information, let's say. So uh, first let us start by defining this average integral over the ball. So uh, this is just, you know, the uh, usual integration of f over the ball divided by this constant. Uh, so this constant is just equal to the uh, volume of the n-dimensional ball with radius r. And this alpha n is just defined as the volume of the n dimensional unit ball, which is explicitly given in this right hand side. Uh, and uh, similarly, average integral over the boundary of the ball is just defined as using the same idea. Uh, only difference is this constant, uh, which is just the surface area of this uh, n dimensional ball with radius r. So uh, the main advantage is if you just use this average integration or, uh, of one over ball or just, you know, surface, you get one in return. So uh, another thing we need is just this Green's formula. I think uh, this is also called, uh, this particular one is also called uh, Green's first identity, first formula. Uh, it has such names. So uh, uh, as you see in this equality, there's some uh, you know, derivatives, blah, blah, but, uh, so we can just pass from the boundary to the uh, set itself. And uh, basically in here, this V is just uh, the unit normal vector field of this boundary pointing out, outwards. And of course, you is just a, a twice continuous differentiable real value function again. So now let us introduce our mean value property. So for any harmonic function and any ball that is contained in this capital U, we have this interesting inequality, uh, I'm sorry, equality. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this uh, ux is just equal to the uh, sur surface integral, uh, average surface integral over the ball, its uh, center x and radius r. And, and this is just equal to the you know, usual average integral over the ball. Uh, so proof is actually really simple and straightforward. So we first, uh, prove the first part of, I mean, this part of the equality. So uh, we start by defining this phi function as the surface integral, just with respect to this variable r. So now uh, we make a simple change of variables at this point in order to differentiate this function. So uh, basically, uh, then we differentiate it, of course, and uh, then we just put in our initial variables at uh, this last equality. So observe that this 
y minus x over r is just the unit normal vector field of the boundary pointing outwards. So this is where the green formula comes into the play, as you may guess. Uh, so we just uh, open this uh, expression, just pull out the constant, this constant. And now using this uh, Green's formula, we just arrive at this last expression. And now since our function is harmonic, this delta is just equal to zero. And so this expression in, in total is equal to zero. So we have just actually shown that phi is a constant function. Uh, another important thing is that actually uh, how we show that uh, the derivative of phi is this expression. This will come handy in uh, one of the upcoming proofs. So now, uh, since we show that this uh, phi is constant, uh, it's just enough to evaluate this phi at a single point. So it turns out that an easy way to evaluate this phi is just taking limits of phi while r goes to zero. So you know, now we just uh, go through our usual uh, limit proving stuff. So uh, we have this difference in absolute value. Now, uh, since as uh, we have shown previously about this, uh, every, uh, this a property of average integration, and since u x is just a constant, we can just put this constant in an average integral, since this is just like multiplying by one. And now uh, squeezing, uh, I'm sorry, combining this integral into a single one and then using triangle inequality, we arrive at this final point. So now we know that U is continuous. Uh, so given any positive epsilon for small enough R, as this Y is just a point on the surface, this difference in the absolute value is of course less than epsilon. And so this integral in total is just less than epsilon. And we actually just showed that this, this limit we were trying to prove just converges to Ux. And so since phi is just a constant function, we just show the desired equality. So uh, for the second part, I mean, this part of the equality is even much simpler. We just use this first part. Now, uh, so consider this integral over the ball. We just use uh, multi I'm in particular, n-dimensional polar coordinates at this right-hand side. Uh, so this, we know actually this inner integral, just by uh, multiplying this with this necessary uh, constant, we arrive at this second integral, I mean, which is very easy to evaluate. And uh, we arrive at this final constant. Uh, you may remember this was just the volume of the, uh, and the dimensional ball with radius r. So uh, in total, we actually showed our desired equality. So actually, interesting thing is that there is also a converse to this property, actually. So if you have any twice continuously differential uh, real, or let me say just uh, an element of C2, and it satisfies this equality for each ball that is containing capital U, then our U is just a harmonic function. So uh, again, I and mean, this is not, this is actually, again, a simple proof. So assume that uh, this delta U is not, yeah, of course, assume that u is not harmonic and consequently this delta u is not uh, equivalent to zero. But then uh, since, uh, oh, there's a typo in here, but uh, since we know that this function is twice continuously differentiable, also this delta u is continuous. So there is at least uh, some, there's some ball contained in this capital U that uh, delta u is greater than zero or uh, less than zero. I and mean, the what proofs are exactly the same. So we can just assume that delta is greater than zero. Now uh, observe that if we differentiate uh, this fun this uh, equality, I mean both sides with respect to R, this left hand side is directly zero since X and R are completely independent. And uh, you might remember uh, I highlighted some uh, integral expression. This was, you might remember, this was just our phi R from the previous proof. So it was just this expression. This is just a positive constant and we know that delta U is greater than zero. So this right-hand side must also be greater than zero. And thus this is a contradiction and U is necessarily harmonic. So uh, after showing this, we will uh, show some 
uh, interesting applications of this property. So we will first start by the strong maximum principle of Laplace equation. Now, additionally, let this capital U be a bounded uh, uh, as well. And it was already open, so we just add this bounded uh, condition. Then uh, if you have any harmonic function or that is also uh, continuous on the boundary, then we have this equality. So maximum of u on the disclosure of u is also the maximum of u on this boundary. Uh, so moreover, if u is connected and this maximum is also attained uh, in this inter, I mean in capital U, then u is constant. So again, uh, this proof is also uh, a straightforward one, let's say. So just let's M be defined as this maximum and S be defined as all points on this capital U that this function U attains this maximum. Uh, so it's, it's it, clearly this is just a, a closed closed set, of course closed. Uh, and uh, now in order to show the openness, uh, we will just uh, show that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we will just use the mean value property that we previously proved. Uh, so we know that, so if we take any element, for example, any S0 of this set, uh, using the mean value property, we have this in a, uh, equality, I'm sorry, equality for R small enough, but this, forces uh, u to be equivalent to m on this ball. And so s is actually open as well. So uh, furthermore, we know that uh, u is connected and also s is non-empty since from assumption there's at least one point contained in s. And thus u is just equal to s. I'm sorry, s is just equal to u. And we are done for this second part. Uh, for the first part, actually, uh, it's essentially falls from the second part, but for an idea, uh, since this we have this boundedness condition, we know that closure of U is uh, compact, so we know that this maximum is attained. Uh, so there are only two uh, possible cases, either this maximum is attained on the boundary or on this capital U. If it's attained on the boundary, then we are done. We have just proved this first case. If uh, the second case is correct, uh, this is where disconnected components come in. So basically in that case, uh, just we can just pick uh, the connected component that uh, contains this maximum point, and then just apply the second part to that connected component. Uh, then, I mean, we can just, uh, and we know that in, that connected component, this uh, that uh, connected component, this function is just equal equivalent to m. Uh, using continuity, we can also extend this thing uh, to the boundary of that connected component, and using the fact that uh, this uh, boundary of this connected component is also contained in the uh, boundary of this capital U, we are essentially done. Uh, so this is roughly, uh, let's say, uh, there are some details you might want to show, but more or less this was uh, a proof, a general proof, let's say. Uh, so an important application of this principle, of course, up to this point, we have not talked about any kind of uh, PD, I mean, properly, but uh, using this maximum principle, actually we can, uh, prove something interesting about po uh, boundary value problem of Poisson equation. So uh, under certain some, so this is just a boundary value problem of this Poisson equation. So uh, under certain assumptions, which are uh, the continuity of, of on this U and continuity of G on this uh, boundary of uh, U, there is, we can say that there is at most one solution this is twice continuously differentiable and continuous on the boundary of this boundary value problem. Uh, so maybe I can just quickly write this thing. So basically uh, the proof is very simple. So you just define, so assume that there are uh, actually 
two solutions to this boundary value problem, let's say u and u tilde. So you can just define this w as u minus u tilde. Then it's uh, easy to see that this w is just harmonic and is uh, equal to zero on the boundary. So now uh, using this uh, strong maximum principle from the previous slides, you can clearly say that uh, this is just less than or equal to zero. Applying the same thing to uh, the, min the uh, minus v, we also see that uh, the reverse, I mean, u tilde minus u is also less than zero. And consequently, u and u tilde must be equal. And thus, uh, this is just a proof. Uh, so this is not, let's say, a direct application of this minimally property. So there's something interesting uh, that this contains this property. So let you be any continuous real valued function that satisfies this minimally property. That is uh, for each ball that's containing this capital U, we have this, again this equality. Then U is actually infinitely many times differentiable. So there's no assumption of differentiability in here, but uh, we arrive at an interesting point, I think. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. So we have mainly used uh, advances partial differential equations book for uh, preparation of this slide and also discussions. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I want to thank my mentor Abba for his wonderful guidance and support. So uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. <laughs>